Hello. Welcome once again. I was asked a question about fuses and which meter to use when you insert the meter for to measure a parasitic draw or in series. Okay, here's an example of two fuses, three fuses. Now, <clears throat> these are in series. Fuse number 41 goes to one side of the battery. Here's another fuse, fuse number 42. <clears throat> this is rated at 80 amps. This is rated at 40 amps. A third one, number 48, 30 amps. Okay, now, okay, the question is, if I measure, if I measure zero volts over here, we're looking at this, but I measure 12 volts over here at this one, number 48 fuse, 12 volts here, but I measure zero volts over here. Okay, which fuse is good, which fuse is not, not good? <clears throat> well, the fact that I measure zero volts here, <clears throat> And I measure 12 volts over here. And this is the most important. This tells me that this fuse is good automatic. Once I measure 12 volts over here, I know this number one 40, 41 fuse is good because otherwise, how can I have 12 volts over here? So that tells me right away, this fuse is not good. Okay, now, okay, to go over that again, 12 volts over here, and I have 12 volts over here, tells me I have 12 volts here automatic. But since I have zero volts, this is the one that's blown. Now, the question is, which meter to use? Let's say I want to take this fuse out, okay? I want to put an instrument that I can measure the current flow, <clears throat> okay? Now, you know that you could put a current meter in series, okay? What we have to pay attention to is the rating of the fuse. <clears throat> now, let's take the normal meter, the normal meter that we use and the normal fuses, let's say this is rated at, as you can see, 50 amps, okay? 50 amp fuse, okay? Now, we wanna put this multimeter, this is not auto range. We wanna make sure we put this on amps. Which one is the correct one? We're gonna measure DC amps. Okay, not AC. So therefore, the selector has to be on a DC amps. When you look over here, this is voltage, V. When you look over here, this is voltage, DC, by this. When you look over here, this is ohms. And when you look over here, this is amps. But this is amps, DC, and amps, AC. This is the, the display or the, the, the identifier for... AC. We need DC. <clears throat> so we're going to select this one, okay? We're going to select the high range always. 200 milliamps. M stands for milliamps, which is 1,000 of an amp. This is much smaller than an amp, okay? The highest that we could go on this meter is how what? 10 amps, okay? This does not display what you're on. It doesn't say amps, and I'll get to a point in a few minutes about that the highest that you could go is 10 amps the highest that you could go here is 200 milliamps in this probe meter over here in this probe in this inserter in the hole over here and this one could go up to 10 amps they're both fused cannot make a mistake that this is 200 amps instead of 200 milliamps way different now if you made a mistake with milliamps and amps, okay? Number one, a thousand volt is the most that you could go with this meter. So it's very important to make a note, how high can I go? So let's say over here we go to a thousand volts DC. You always have a description over here how high you can go. So a thousand volts DC or 750 volts AC, either one. Now, like I said, someone made the mistake. I'm glad he didn't connect it that way, but he misread it and said, this is this is 200 amps. No. First of all, look at this cable. This cable, can, if you're putting, if you're putting a, a meter in series, that means you are taking this fuse out. You're putting the meter instead of the fuse. So it's going to measure how much current is going through. Okay? Great technique. However... 
we have to pay attention to the meter rating. <clears throat> if you make a mistake and say this is 200 amps, this thin wire cannot handle 200 amps. The right wire <clears throat> for these kinds of things is obviously the battery cable. Look how thick these are. You see this? Regardless if you have a side terminal, regardless if you have a post or top terminal, these are very thick the cable because they're going to carry a lot of amps they can carry 700 800 peak amps it depends so when you look at this this thin little wire there is no comparison to what this this is not made to handle that much it is made to handle up to 10 amps okay that's number one so in that uh a circuit that I just showed you excuse me for pausing but I want to get this in uh, into the picture can I put if I'm expecting 40 amps can I put this meter in that place if you said yes you're wrong this can only go up to 10 amps if I want to take this one out and then measure 30 amps and put this meter in this place if fuse number 48 can I do that if you said yes you're wrong it can only go up to 10 amps what about this one, 80 amps? This meter cannot take the place of neither of these three fuses. No way. Because these are rated more than 10 amps, which is more than this meter can hold. What's the proper one? So that's why I brought this one, a clamp meter. Look, look at the difference. That can go up to 10 amps. Look what this could go up to, 200 amps. Okay? This I can put... I can put and clamp it around the wire. Not the, I cannot take out the fuse and put this one in there because it has to be series, number one. Number two, if you look, let me get a good shot over here. Let me get a good shot. Okay, volts or ohms, there is no insert for amps, you cannot put this in series like the other one I just showed you. It is made to be used as a clamp to go around the wire. That's what it's made for. So example, here's, here's this, here's the wire. Here's the wire. You put this always around the wire, okay? It's not made to go in the place of this. Okay, that's why you can handle 200 amps. So, I will not take the fuse out, but I will find a wire that goes to this fuse. Once I find a wire that goes to this fuse, am I concerned that this is 40 amps? Am I concerned this is 80 amps? No, because the rating of this right here, DC, as you can see, DC, see the A? A little hard to see it. See the A? It tells you amps and you're on the DC selector. So therefore I can use this one for any of these fuses. As long as it doesn't go past 200 amps, I'm good with this meter. But you cannot insert it in place of a component. It has to go around a wire. So this is the best tool to use. That's why you have to pay attention, number one, what is the rating of the fuse? If I have a parasitic drawer, okay? Let's say overnight I left, I left the car, okay? I come the next morning, I go to work, I turn it on, the battery, uh, battery volt is about 11 volts, 10 and a half volts, okay? I'm worried what took down the battery, what drained it, what drained it, okay? We obviously, the lights, we're always concerned about those things, but you always have to pay attention to the rating of any fuse that you take out. If it's 10 amp fuse, you're good. I can even use this one that we just talked about for the last nine minutes. This will go up to 10 amps. I could put it in series. See the difference? A slot for 10 amps for, for, for measuring current. This one, no slot whatsoever. It's either volts or ohms or... You put it as a clamp meter around the wire as to measure amps. There's no need. If I could put a clamp around the wire, why would I have to put it in series? It's the next best. It's the next best thing to do to measure current. Now, if I put it on the wrong way on the wire, I'll just get a negative, which is no problem. I'll just turn it around, or I'll just live with it. If it's minus 100 amps, so 
I know I understand it's 100 amps. No, no worries about that. But anyway, <clears throat> I just wanted to point out, always have to be correct in the amps and understand what milliamps is. There is a, there is a great difference of one milliamp and one amp. So I do not like these type of meters like I told you. I like these type of meters. Why? For the reason <clears throat> that I told you that they give you the DC, they tell you what you're on, and they tell you amps. See the little A, like Apple? So you know when you put the switch on, okay? <clears throat> right now I'm measuring frequency. It tells you hertz. You cannot make a mistake, okay? So like I said, I've been asked, Who's the maker and the manufacturer of this? This is more than 20 years old. I cannot even find the manufacturer of this, believe it or not. I don't know, but there are so many out there today, and I'm sure they're much, this was over $200. They're much cheaper today, much cheaper. Try to get the most amps that you can. Remember, <clears throat> you might take 600, 700 amps when you peak start it because you're shocking the battery when you first start the battery in your car until it settles down so try to get the most peak amp that you can with a clamp meter 400 amps is fine 500 amps is even greater but if you get 400 amps or 500 amps you're not going to have all these features to measure volts or ohms or things like that it might just be a current meter so pay attention to those things number two pay attention to the jaws these are called the jaws make sure it's small enough if it's too big like electrical, sometimes they use these for AC wiring, three-phase, and things like that. The jaws are much bigger. <clears throat> That's fine for electrical, for AC. But for cars where everything is so cramped and everything is so narrow, there's no space, you have to have the smallest jaws that you can fit it around that. Please see my video about how to measure the alternator, the, the current I made those videos on Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto and the Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. So please tune to those to watch those hands-on videos. Again, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto. And uh, thank you to the subscribers. Hope you're enjoying the holidays. Bye.